<laughs> Today we're taking a look at a quad copter from the Detroit Multi-Rotor Company. This one is called the Whippet I and H frame because of its unique way of being built together to be either an I or an H frame. And today we're doing the H. Comes in a package like this. And I got the red ones, the red uh, printed 3D printed parts because I'm going to be running some red bottom motors on it. And these are the 2300 KV motors. I thought I had some 26, but I can't find them. This is what it comes with. It comes with, you also send in some stickers and a business card and these instructions on how to put it together. So let me get this out and we'll take a little closer look at it. So these are the parts that come with it. It has the four arms and the top plate and it has these two middle plates that squeeze the arms together. Again, the 3D printed parts, battery strap and some screws. Now, one cool thing about this is that this is the bottom plate and this is where the battery strap runs through to hold the battery onto the uh, bottom of the quadcopter. This piece, however, is not carbon fiber. This is actually G10. That way you can mount your power distribution board straight down to this with no spacers and it doesn't short out. <laughs> that, that's gonna save a little bit of room inside the, uh, inside the frame between the um, plates. So here's the frame partially assembled. And the thing I was talking about that's kind of unique about this frame is this massive distance between the front to rear propellers. And the, also the left to right is a little bit closer than normal. And here, this is a special frame, it's these special arms. And these arms are designed so they can go on like this and it can make it long and skinny or you can turn them over this way and the arms actually reach out a little bit instead of backward. And that's just because of the way the arms are cut. But for this frame build, I'm gonna make it long and skinny but like this because I think this will make a lot better racer because as it leans forward, you have a little bit more um, smoothness, I guess, in your forward to uh, backward because when you're racing, you're mostly you know worried about this. And if, and if you go to do a roll, it's gonna be narrower this way, so it should roll a lot faster than it flips. It, hopefully, it'll have slow flips and fast rolls. You can control that somewhat with your rate, but by spacing the motors out a little bit further apart than what you would normally do, I think that'll also actually give you a little bit more control from front to back. One other build aspect of this that I like to see is that when for these uh, spacers, they have a lot of threads hanging up above. So when you go to screw this on, you have a lot of threads going into this, which should make it a lot more or a lot more stringent and crashes and less tend and have a less tendency to break because you have so much thread hanging on there. And also, they put the uh, long screw here at through the through the bottom plate, through the arm, through the upper plate, and into this. And so you're kind of, that screw is kind of serving a dual purpose. It's helping hold the frame together and it's also holding the spacer. So you don't have a separate set of screws for the spacer as you do for the arms. So that actually allows you to eliminate some uh, unnecessary screws. And uh, anyway, looks like this. And I'm going to get the rest of this put together and we'll get some measurements off of it. So here's the Whippet fully assembled. And you can definitely see how it's long and narrow uh, from this angle. And it is, it is really just different than every other quad I've seen so far. Uh, back here for the 3D printed parts, this part goes back here on the back and it has these holes to help hold stuff onto this. So like your video transmitter can go on here or your, uh, your receiver, whatever you want to. Up here on the front, it has these two little side things that are designed to hold the camera like the HS 1177, like this one right here. And this goes in here between the two 3D printed parts to help, help hold it in place. And it has this little piece that goes up over the top to give it a little bit of protection and a crash in case you're one of the crazy flyers who fly at a better than 45 degree angle. Which I'm working on doing that because I'm tired of getting beat. Anyway, this is the uh, printed part up here helps protect that camera from, the, from, the, uh, from impacts when you crash upside down. But the one nice thing they did, they thought about this, at least I hope they did, and they did it on purpose, was they made this 3D printed part here adjustable so it can ride up at the top of this pole instead of down here at the bottom. The advantage of that is it gets it up out of the way so you can have your power distribution board attached directly down to this G10 piece here on the bottom, which won't short out. And then you have a little small spacer and your flight board goes right up above that, which makes a lot of room up here up above for other components to go in there, like your camera and your video transmitter it can actually go through here and actually ride uh actually be uh, strapped on right here to this back piece so that it, it actually rides directly in place and that's what the holes here for of course you're going to be shorting your ground you're going to be grounding your frame which means don't short anything to the frame 
or else you'll have problems. But just do it the right way and you'll be fine. Also, it gives you plenty of room back up underneath here for your receiver to go, or if you want to put your receiver on the back, you can do that, put your video transmitter in there, whatever way you want it to. We'll go ahead and get some measurements off of these arms. And these arms are coming in about 2.8, so they're probably three millimeter arms. Yeah, these here are actually three millimeters. Let's try this somewhere else out here. 2.8, something like that. The uh, top plate here comes in about one and a half millimeters. And one and a half is kind of the minimum th thickness you need, but because the battery on this one's gonna ride on the bottom, the thickness of the top plate isn't so you know, important. It, one and a half is, should be fine. If you're gonna be carrying a battery on top, you really want about two. But let's check the space in between these uh, two plates here. It comes out to be about 40 millimeters. And a lot of these are 35 millimeters, but they probably chose the 40 millimeters just to make a little bit more space up underneath there for more components to fit in between the plates. Here I have a couple of red bottoms attached up to the front of this uh, quad. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some propellers on here so we can see how far apart they're actually um, coming on this frame. There, you can see even with five inch props, they're clearing each other just fine. Now, because these arms are stretching out, there's gonna be a lot of extra room. Well, get these out of the way. There's gonna be a lot of extra room here between the propeller and the frame. But that's because it has to be out far enough that, that you don't touch side to side here. Now, on the back, I don't have any more motors out of the packages, but you can see here, look at the distance there between the motor, between the ends of the propellers. It is ginormous compared to the left to right. That's why I think this frame is going to have a lot of real easy control when it leans forward and backward, and it should uh, roll real fast. Here I have the ruler. I'm gonna go ahead and measure this to see what size this is actually coming in at. Uh, there we go, it's kind of centered there. Comes back here to be about 220 in this configuration. And if I measure from the side to side motors here, comes in about, where is it? 130 from the side to side. And uh, this, this one I'm kind of anxious to see because I haven't measured this yet. But from the front to back, comes in about 175. So 130 by 175. This is gonna fly so much different than my other quads. Here I have the motors off again. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the scale and we'll see what this comes out. Wayne comes in about 81.6. And if I put this battery strap on here, well, this <laughs> is almost, it comes in about 85.2. And having a frame that's under 100 grams is a huge benefit just because you have that much less weight that the motors have to pull through the air. So this is the Whippet frame from Detroit Multirotor. This thing is going to be unique in my uh, collection of quads. I like this, I like the fact that it has all this stuff, uh, the camera mounts up here and they're actually lifted up to provide a little bit of extra space here and I think the G10 main plate here to keep the thing from shorting is an excellent idea also. So there's not really much I don't like about this frame. Maybe I'll have some different opinions after I assemble it, but right now I'm really stoked about it. Also, I did manage to find my 2600 kV uh, red bottoms, so I may be putting these on instead with some five inch propellers. Yes, they're gonna draw a lot of amps. I know people say don't run them with five inch propellers. I'm gonna do it. And also I'm probably gonna be running 30 amp ESCs on here, so we'll see how that turns out. Anyway, this is the Whippet Frame from Detroit Multirotor. If you have any questions about this, leave them in the comments. I will try to help you out as best I can. And as always, thanks for watching.